Hi, I'm going to use conservation of energy to calculate the force this person needs to use in order to uh, push this block up, the, up this ramp. So I use the term force, so it sounds like maybe this is a Newton's, Newton's Laws problem, but it isn't because the, this surface is curved, which creates a variable force situation, and so I need to use conservation of energy to do such a calculation. So I need to give you some data first before we can make sense of this problem. The length of the ramp, I'm going to call that uh, D for distance, is 7 meters. So that's how far the person is going to uh, push this block. The height of this, we use the symbol Y, so the height of this ramp is 1.3 meters. That would be Y final. The mass of the block is 60 kilograms. And the block is actually already moving. It has an initial velocity of 1.2 meters per second. And then we want it to end up with a speed of 2.8 meters per second at the top of this ramp. And ultimately, I'm going to calculate, like I said, the force that the person needs to uh, exert continuously along the length of this ramp in order for that to occur. And we're going to assume that the person always exerts a force parallel to the motion or parallel to the shape of this curve just to make this uh, calculation for, uh, reasonable. Okay, so I'm actually going to think about a free body diagram for this situation first. Again, even though this is a energy calculation, I still think it's a good idea to draw a free body diagram. So the, the free body diagram would look like this. We'd have a uh, we'd have a normal force up to the left from the ramp. We'd have a weight force straight down, and then we'd have a normal force from the person up to the right. Those are the three forces. They're gonna the weight force is gonna be constant. Uh, the normal force is gonna vary in direction and magnitude actually, and the normal force from the person is gonna vary in direction as the uh, block goes up this uh, ramp. So it is a dynamic um, force situation. Uh, but this is still important to make sure that we keep track of every force in our conservation of energy calculation. So the normal force from the ramp is irrelevant because it's always exerted perpendicular to the motion. The normal form force from the person, I'm going to keep track of with a work function. They exert a force over a distance, so that's going to be a work calculation. And then the weight force, I'm going to keep track of with uh, using the potential energy function, MGY. Okay, so I'm going to write down the uh, a very general statement of conservation of energy, and then we'll use the specific formulas for this physical situation. So I have initial kinetic energy, I have initial potential energy, and then, so this is with energy that we start with, then I add or remove energy through the process of work, and then I end up with kinetic energy and uh, potential energy. Okay, so a fairly uh, general formula that could apply to a lot of different physical situations. Now let's adapt it to this one. So I do have some initial kinetic energy, uh, one half mv squared. Um, I do not have any initial potential energy. I'm going to compress spring. Uh, we're going to set y equal to zero at the bottom of this ramp, so there's no gravitational potential energy. So that term disappears, and then work. Work is force times distance times cosine of the angle between the force and the motion. Uh, that simplifies to force times distance when the force and the motion are in the same direction. So I'm going to uh, just write F times D. Okay, the F in question is this normal force from the person. I'm just using the generic uh, F. And then final kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. Uh, it's moving in a line, so one. that's the right formula. And then uh, Final potential energy, MGY. All right, so a big ugly equation with lots of uh, symbols in it. Let's, again, make sure that we have uh, knowledge of all we need uh, other than the one variable of interest. Typically, a conservation of energy equation is one, one big equation, hopefully with, with one unknown that we can solve for. So I know mass, I know initial velocity, I know distance, I know mass again, I know uh, final velocity, I know height, I know, assume this occurs on planet Earth, so I know that number, and so then the force is the, the one unknown.
do some algebra. I'm going to skip over all the all the steps and just give you the solution, uh, symbolic solution in terms of uh, in, uh, for for force. So I end up with this. Check this yourself if you don't believe me. But there's the symbolic solution. Okay, so it doesn't simplify too much, but uh, we can go ahead and throw it. We got a symbolic solution for the force in terms of things that we know. So we just need to chuck these numbers in plus the known value for G, and we'll be we'll be done. So the mass of the block is 60 kilograms. G is 9.8. Height of the ramp is 1.3 meters. Final velocity of 2.8. Initial velocity of 1.2. And exerted over a distance of 7 meters. And I throw that into my calculator and it tells me that it is, um, rounding a little bit, 140 so that's the force that the person needs to continuously exert along the full length of the ramp in order to attain uh, this particular velocity at the, at the top of it. Okay, thanks for watching.